So we finally did it, guys. We finally swapped over to Double Swing. I've been waiting so long to play this build. This build is a triple shout stun double swing build that focuses on using two hammers and just absolutely clobbering all the monsters in the dungeon. This build is very, very fast. You're utilizing ground stomp and you're actually using double swing. The one big thing about this build is it does lack a little bit of AOE, but if you can kite these mods perfectly, then this build will absolutely smash everything in its path. So today we're gonna go over everything that you need for the build, how to play it, the Paragon board, and everything in the early end game of Diablo 4. Let's do it. So guys, this is finally my double swing end game or early end game build that i'm going to take into the end game now i do want to preface that i don't even have everything leveled up i am actually missing a lot of levels on a lot of this gear and we're still decimating and we actually have one less um, malignant heart slot i just don't even have one to put in here which really sucks i should have swapped this one over but even with all that said this build just absolutely smacks so let's get into the abilities and uh, what we have going on here. This is going to be a triple shout build, okay? I really, really enjoy this build. This is probably what I'm going to be playing um, for the foreseeable future to get my Barbarian to 100. The only other build that I would play because it mirrors it slightly is playing um, Hoda. But I do like the idea of playing Double Swing, which is just something a little different. So starting off, guys, we are going to be going into Lunging Strike into combat lunging strike just to give us a little bit of berserk damage which i think is going to be really really cool or not damage but berserking just a little bit to give us some more movement speed and damage down to our core skills of course we're maxing double swing into violent double swing the cool thing about violent double swing is that it helps keeps our enemies vulnerable yes we are running the exploit glyph but when that is off this allows us to do it again and make our enemies vulnerable however if you wanted to extend berserking you definitely could Otherwise, you don't actually need it. So we're going to go down into our defenses. We are running triple shouts plus ground stomp. So we got ground stomp into tactical ground stomp just to generate fury. This is going to be like an infinite fury build almost. It feels like I'm just always going to be able to ground stomp and get our fury back and then always be able to double swing. There's been very few times that I've just haven't completely run out to where I have to use lunging strike. Otherwise, with our shouts, we're able to keep up our fury pretty good. Of course, we got Rallying Cry into Tactical Rallying Cry for the initial Fury and Fury Regeneration. Then we're taking Challenging Shout into Tactical for the Fury when we get hit, as well as the debuff on the enemies, which is very important. Then down into our Brawling Skills, we're taking War Cry into Power War Cry. However, if you really wanted to, to help give you some more survivability, you could do Mighty War Cry, but we're going to focus on Warbringer for that. I do like the extra damage here. Then we're uh, going almost all out on all of our passes for the, the voices or the shouts. Three into Booming Voice to make them last longer. Three into Gutter All Yell for damage reduction. And then one into Raid Leader, which I think is just enough uh, for you and your teammates. This build really works well in solo and group play. 1.2 Aggressive Resistance for more damage reduction. Three points into Prolific Fury while we're berserking to get more uh, Fury regen. Then we're coming down into Weapon Mastery Skills. We're taking three points into Pit Fighter. Three points into No Mercy. Uh, for the increased damage to close and then the increased critical strike chance against a mobilized stun or slowed so we're going to take one point in the hamstring for the slow effect on healthy enemies but we're always going to be able to have them stunned which is really good so we got two out of the three here so this is most likely always going to proc and then we're coming down and using thick skin for a little bit of fortify as well as counter offensive our fortify should always be over 50 percent. so the 12 percent multiplicative damage here is so good then down into ultimate skills, guys. No ultimates yet. I think towards the end game, I'm going to end up taking Wrath of the Berserker and just dropping one of my shouts probably. Or if I have my Fury Regeneration up enough, we're going to drop Lunging Strike all together. But we are taking three points into Duelist for attack speed. This build really focuses on having a lot of attack speed. Um, there's only a few ways to get it, but we want to have it. So 9% increase there. Then we're taking... Uh, maxing out wallop we got two which is going to end up being three once we level up our amulet for um using bludgeon and weapons to do increased damage if the enemy is thunder vulnerable this is always going to hit this is so much damage and we're using double maces for this build no swords double maces we're going to do so much damage and then of course concussion for the additional chance to stun then our key passive here is going to be unbridled rage the reason we want Unbridled Rage is because we're doing not, our only damage dealer is our core skill. So we want to max this out. But 
I did just learn that this Umbrella Rage does scale with close, um, what is it, close damage to close enemies. So having this on your rings, for example, is very, very strong. So I have Unbridled Rage here. There isn't anything else that you really need uh, for this. You could argue Unconstrained, but you're going to lose a lot of damage during that. So just Unbridled Rage. So let's get into the gear, guys. You see that my gear isn't leveled up, but I am going to go over everything. This build is going to be so much stronger when it's actually got all my gear leveled up. I literally just ran out of resources, which really sucks. Uh, surprisingly, Veiled Crystals for some reason. But let's get into it. So we have Audacity here. This is something that you could swap out. I think this is really, really good when there are big groups of mobs, at least five, to stun them. So that way, right off the bat, you stun an enemy or stun five enemies, and you're already getting all your damage buff from having them stunned. Super powerful. Then we're taking a Numbing Wrath. Each point of fury that we generate while at maximum gives us fortified. This helps us get that extra 12%. Then we have Relentless Berserker Gauntlets. On a lucky hit, Damage uh, with core skills has a chance to extend berserking. We're getting berserking from lunging strike as well as war cry, which is really cool. In our pants, we're doing disobedience for more armor. Uh, in our boots, we're doing exploiters for the increased crowd control and then more damage against unstoppable enemies. We're going to come back to this in just a second. In our two handed, we're doing smiting. I wish I had a better one here, but I don't. Once I get a really good one or a max one, I'm going to slap this on here because it's so, so good. So you have a 26% increased critical strike chance against injured enemies. Injured enemies are below 35% health. And then while we are healthy, which is always going to happen because we're at, we got increased fortified and we're always going to be super healthy. We got increased crowd control duration. So what happens is, is that on our shouts, like challenging shout, even though the damage reduction is for 12 seconds, it's actually longer. And this also applies to our uh, stun here with Wallop. Where is it? Our stun here with Concussion, which is why it's five and a half seconds, which is absolutely insane. So this is so, so strong. In our one-handed, we have Accelerating for more attack speed. However, I almost feel like I want to swap Accelerating here and put it on a Retribution or put it up into the Amulet instead of Edge Masters, But... Uh, you can go back and forth on this one. You could almost put smiting down here and put accelerating there just to swing more. But so far, I think it's fine. Uh, and then we have impact of limitless rage. Each point of fury we generate while at maximum fury uh, gives us our core skill increased damage up to 30%, which is huge. And then in our crystal short sword, we have um, retribution. The distant enemies have a chance to be stunned, but we deal 40% increased damage to stun enemies, which they're always going to be stunned all the time. In our amulet, we have Edge Masters. While we have our Fury maxed out, we're going to deal even more damage. And then both of our rings, because we're doing triple shot, we're doing Bold Chieftains for cooldown, as well as Band of Echoing Fury for cooldown. Now, another thing I do want to mention about keeping our Fury up as much as possible is that each of my rings have resource generation. This is very, very important on this build because we're only swinging with one skill. So having resource generation to keep our Fury almost maxed all the time is so important. And it's going to be even higher once we actually level this stuff up. Now, back to the double hammers here. Okay, a lot of people are going to ask, well, why not do swords? Because swords end up giving the crit strike damage. As much crowd control that we are going to be doing and stunning so many enemies, I actually don't need the extra crit damage. I'm going to be having so much extra damage just from the initial stuns here that it kind of is... We don't really lose out on a whole lot of damage. And I actually really like the idea of just double stunning. And, it, and with all of the extra fortify that we're always going to have, the overpower damage actually comes in handy sometimes. Because like this costs 38 with Unbridled Rage, so... Two of that is over 75, and all we have to do is do 75 just to get our Warbringer to actually proc. So it's 75. So one swing from this, or two swings, and we actually we actually pop this twice, and then we're good to go. So two swings, and we already have it, and we're going to be swinging nonstop. So that's the gear. Now I want to go ahead and show you uh, a little bit more of a showcase on top of this, like we do in all of our build guides here. Um, and I also want, I will skip guys to, to the end just to show you guys the boss fight. So the build is real simple. Pop your shouts, lunging strike if you have to, double swing away, and then cast ground stomp on large mobs. It's really, really easy. You see how fast we swing? I'm just going to try to get to release the switch, and then that way we can uh, do the boss. 
I will mention that this build just isn't the greatest against... Doesn't have a whole lot of AoE, but the build is just solid enough. Like, it, it, it's fine, as long as we can kite him. But you guys can see, like, with all the stunning, like, we can just roam free no problem in this build. All right, now let's take a look at fighting the boss and see how well we do against the boss. We're starting out with zero fury here. Let's see how well we do. Stun. We get massive stun here. Huge CC. Kill all the little lackeys. Look how much stun we get. Wait till we wait till we CC her. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. That is super, super good. And we don't even have him brighter leveled up. Let's go ahead and get this thing to 15. So as you guys can see, Double Swing is an absolute powerhouse of a build. We don't even have everything leveled up. We're missing some gems here. Uh, but I do want to preface that this build is just so, 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 so good. Our expertise is going to be... Uh, two-handed axe uh however you could opt in for two-handed sword if you really really felt like it but two-handed axe is just going to maximize your damage and then keep in mind that your two-handed maces or your two one-handed maces you get 10 percent increased damage against the stunned enemies and then you double the amount so it's actually 20 percent because we're using two maces and then on lucky hits we have a chance uh to begin berserking uh when we hit a stunned enemy which all of our enemies are always going to be stunned so this build is absolutely insane. Let's go over the Paragon board and everything that you guys need for that. So the Paragon board is actually a build off of our bleed builds because our Ren builds were built to help do stun. So there's going to be some similarities here. However, I have changed the bleed build Paragon boards, which you guys should see updated here very soon in the uh, build planners over at Mobilitics. So coming in here, we're taking exploit. Of course, we want the vulnerability damage, but we're grabbing brawn for physical damage. Then we're grabbing iron strength for armor and strength, raw power for physical damage with the corresponding strong nodes. We could put an extra node here if we take a point all the way out of here if we really want to just for now, just have the extra 5% physical damage. Same thing that we could do here, take another point out and put it in here, which would actually be super, super strong. Then into our next board, we have Weapon Master, which we're not going to be taking. But we're going to come up and we're going to grab physical damage from raw power. Our glyph of choice is going to be Marshall, which is why you guys see us have so many resets on all of our shout skills. It's absolutely insane. Then we're going to come all the way over and we're going to grab Hunter Killer for more damage against elites and move speed. This is very important, okay? Elites are, can be really, really tough, so that really helps out. Next, we're going to come over and take Iron Strength for more armor and strength. And then into our third Paragon board, which is going to be Warbringer, which is going to be the only node, a legendary node that we're taking right now, which is going to give us more uh, Fortify every time we spend 75 Fury, which again is only two swings. So we're going to come in, we're going to take uh, Territorial here for the increased damage to close enemies because we're always going to be close and the damage reduction. I do want to say that you could probably take something else here. Another really good one is possibly Ambidextrious, Ambidex, Ambidextrious. <laughs> ambidextrous i've been testing this one there just isn't too good rare nodes that help with the 75 percent increase or once you get it higher level it's even more uh, the other really strong one that you can put here is wrath because you get the increased critical strike damage but then when you uh skills that critically strike generates you three fury however i did want to keep territorial only because we're always at like really good fury and we barely run out so i didn't feel like the extra crit damage was completely necessary i'd rather have the flat close damage up front uh, then we're taking raw power for physical damage and the corresponding nodes we're going to come over and we're going to grab hungering fury for more fury and more importantly the fury on kill here in these corresponding nodes then of course warbringer in our fourth board here guys which i'm probably going to take this all the way to the end game we're going to come up and the board is going to be decimator and we're going to be taking imbiter okay we don't have the the 25 willpower yet that really isn't like super necessary for the additional bonus because of the increased healing potion. I mean, that's not that's very nice to help keep us alive. However, the the big damage here is damage while healthy, which is super super strong. Um, that's what really increases our attack power here. So once we get some more um, points, we're going to be able to to max this out and get this higher level and get this to fifteen. But the idea here is to have more flat damage here, 
Then we're going to come over and grab Demolish for more vulnerable damage. And then we're going to come this way and grab Arrogance for damage reduction against vulnerable enemies. Because everybody's always going to be vulnerable. So guys, that is the Paragon board. This is my double swing build. I love Triple Shout. The build is super, super easy. Super, super fun. It's really, really cool. And it's such a different way to play it with double uh, maces instead of like swords and stuff like that. I really think that is, is just a really cool way to play the build. So uh, I do want to mention that this build flat out with none of these powers is really good for leveling. So I will have the leveling build variant of level 1 to 50 for this in the description below, guys. Um, you can really use this exact same build. The only powers that you really actually need for this is going to be your Band of Echoing Fury because you can get this from a Codex. Um, maybe Edge Masters in the Amulet and then... Uh, there's one more that you guys could probably do. Uh, you could do Retribution, which you can get from a Codex. Disobedience that you can get from a Codex. Uh, and that's it. So you could do Disobedience, Retribution, Echoing Fury, as well as Edge Masters for the leveling. I think I have all of those put in the actual guide. So I'll have the leveling, the, the guide for the leveling build in there. And I will attach this video to that just to showcase... Um, because we're, we're too high to really go back and make one, but this works for that as well. So guys, like the video, comment down below what do you guys think of the build. It is super, super fun, super strong. Um, the, the build really prefaces on having good attack speed. So like my attack speed roll here is actually really low. We need it to be a lot higher. But that is it, guys. Subscribe if you guys are new. And as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.